Thank you, Peter. Well, on behalf of Lori, myself, and Catherine, I want to join Peter in thanking you all for coming. There are more seats for those of you in the back. There are seats here in the front and some on the side, so feel free to come up if uh, that's helpful for you to have a seat. I think as all of you know, we've been here a number of times. We've had an opportunity to meet some of you, not all of you personally. Uh, last time when I was here, I certainly had an opportunity to meet in some small groups and one-on-one, -on -one, really to understand in every way that we, Lori, myself, Catherine, and the Well Sanctuary Project, our board of directors and the like, can understand your concerns, can hear fears about whales, fears about the project, whatever's on your mind, so that we could then go back and try to understand what we might do to accommodate those concerns, to respond to them in ways that might alter what we have proposed in the past, or that it bring into account the concerns that we're hearing. Now, it doesn't mean we can do everything. But what we hope you understand, and the reason we're here tonight, is to demonstrate that that is our intent, that's our desire to be responsive to the community, to you individuals, to groups, and there are, there are factions, there are things that obviously we hear, and it's a contentious project, and we know that. But we hope that this evening what we're able to do is hear again concerns, but at the beginning what we'll do is show you those things that we've been able to bring to bear, that we think respond to some of those concerns. In doing so, we'll take a few moments, because some of you have not been at these meetings before, just to give you the context of the Whale Sanctuary Project. For some of you, that'll be repetitious, and we ask your patience. Carry you through why we're doing this, why we think it's important, and then show you some of these changes we've made in the plan to respond to what we've heard. So that won't take us long, and then we'll move directly into the open mic session, as Peter mentioned. So with that, I'd like to turn the mic over to Lori, and then I'll be back shortly. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, again, I just would like to, to have a brief uh, recap of of why we trot around the world trying to find a, a place for beluga whales and others who are currently living in tanks. Um, I created the Whale Sanctuary Project about two and a half beluga whales and others who are currently living in tanks. Um, I created the Whale Sanctuary Project about two and a half, three years ago. And that was out of my understanding of what these animals suffer from concrete tanks, having studied them for decades. Um, our organization is tasked with establishing a permanent seaside sanctuary where captive cetaceans, dolphins, and whales can live in an environment that actually maximizes their ability to thrive and their ability to choose how they spend their day and is as close as possible to their natural habitat. In the process, we have an incredible board, an incredible group of people who have come together, including Charles, and more than 50 expert advisors in marine mammalogy, in conservation, policy, science in every area that is relevant to doing this successfully, including scientists like Dr. Sylvia Earle and Jean-Michel Cousteau, Dr. Carl Sufina, and, and Nova Scotia's own Hal Whitehead, who's right here at Dalhousie. There we go. So, just a little bit more about why this is so important to do now. It's because public opinion has changed. <coughs> We've all gone to zoos and aquaria and, well, as kids, and we thought nothing of it. Now we know better. Now we know that these animals suffer a great deal in the tanks and in the cages. 
and the public opinion has turned to being more sensitive to these animals, to trying to find a new way to relate to them. And that's especially true of the kids, right? The students and the young kids, they know. Now, if this is so important, why can't we just get them all out of the tanks and dump them back in the ocean? Well, we can't. And the reason is because they wouldn't survive. They don't know how to survive. They've been born in a tank. It would be like you being born in a closet, and then somebody opens the door and says, go ahead, enjoy your life. You wouldn't know how to get food, how to survive, how to stay uh, protected, nothing. And you wouldn't make it. So that's why we have to have sanctuaries, places where they can be cared for. Now, you know that Canada has passed legislation recently, Bill S-203, adopted by Canadian Parliament. And this bans the keeping of dolphins and whales on display in Canada and breeding. And there are 50 beluga whales in Canada still. And the question becomes, what happens next? You guys here in Canada are way ahead of the United States. When passing this legislation, you got to speak. So you should all be proud of that. And sanctuaries, sanctuaries for elephants, tigers, primates, you name it, they're all over the world. They've been created for all of these animals who come from circuses and zoos and bad circumstances to be given a second chance at life. And now, now is the time to do the same thing for dolphins and whales. Let me just tell you briefly what I know from my work studying these animals in concrete tanks. I tell you what their life is like. This is a picture from Marine Land Canada in Ontario, right next door. They have over 50 beluga whales stuffed into two tanks. This is how crowded it is for them. All of this abnormal crowding causes them to fight, causes them to have all kinds of social problems. Because of that, babies get picked on. Uh, mothers cannot defend their, their children, and many die. It would be like being stuffed into a room like this for the rest of your life. Not, we all get to go home to our, our homes. They don't, that's it for them. What about in the center here? Well, because life is so stressful for these animals, they do things that you see in hospitals where people have emotional problems. They, they have make circular motions with their head, repetitive motions called stereotopies. They grate their teeth on the gates because they're so frustrated and so chronically stressed that that's the only way they can deal with it. It's the only way they can deal with it. And as you can see, this happens to be an orca, uh, but she has no teeth. And the reason she has no teeth is because she's been grating her teeth for decades. And on the right, you see a phoenix, who is a beluga whale who lived in Vancouver, who passed away with her daughter. And there she's being attended to. All of this stress, all of this chronic stress causes their immune system to just shut down and they die early and often. It is really a horror show for them. What we want to do is stop that and give them another chance at life, as we all want. So what is an authentic sanctuary? Not a zoo, not a place where you know, we sell tickets and souvenirs and, and people are climbing all over the place to get their hands on the animals. That's not what we want. We want a serene place where these animals can thrive. 
not just live, but thrive. To also be an example to children, to the next generation, that we have that we have the ability to have a new relationship with these animals. We don't have to put them in tanks, we're better than that. And that's what's so important, according to me as an educator. It's a place where individualized lifetime care, the priorities for the residents, no performances, jumping through hoops, no breeding, because we don't want to make more animals who are in captivity, and no unnecessary invasive medical procedures. Their autonomy, their freedom of choice will be respected and promoted. And in addition to that, we get authentic education. Your kids get authentic education, authentic conservation, and we share everything we learn about these animals with you, with you and with your kids and it becomes a place where we can transform how we care for the oceans because that's what we're all concerned about here is the oceans and the individual animals who live in it and finally it is sustainable both in terms of environmental and financial an authentic sanctuary is a place where it is environmentally sustainable. It doesn't degrade the environment. It actually conserves and preserves the environment. And finally, financially sustainable. I can tell you right now, stand up right now in front of you and tell you that five or 10 years down the road, if we did this, there's no way that we would ever allow money to run out and be left with eight beluga whales with no way to feed them and, and all of that. It's just not going to happen. And we ensure that by making sure that we have enough endowment and enough donations to make this work for the full lifespan of these magnificent animals. So I think with that, I'm going to turn things over to Charles, and he's going to tell you about some of the things we've been talking about. Thanks, Lord.